All right, go. Hello, everyone. This is episode 15 of the Commander Signal, the podcast that respects Redskins past while discussing Commander's present and future. It, your hosts here for the podcast, Alex and Kenneth, mm-hmm. and we're here to talk about what happened at the NFL Draft. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Kenneth, and we'll get started. All right, well, there you go. Uh, first of all, talking to... Um... Had night one, as you can see, wearing a damn tie like you're supposed to. Remember back in the day when people did that? I complain about this at home. Y'all have no idea how much I torture my family with this. <laughs> like these people all wearing chains and stuff. Like, come on, man. It's for the streets, man. Show show up for no, the job you want. I, I respect that. Um, it used to be very rare that you would see like someone dressed with chains. It'd be like maybe the guy that knew or felt like he should go number one. Maybe you got like a Dion Sanders like once in a while, yeah, but like yeah. those guys, like you, they could kind of pull it off. But like you see everyone kind of just doing it now. Like the whole respect for the what I felt was the whole process kind of seems to be going. And, and I kind of know we talked about this a bit. It seems to be more for like TV ratings now than yeah. like anything. Also, like uh, whatever, wherever they're buying their suits, I'm pretty sure there's a men's section. They sell men's clothing there if y'all want. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that's very true alex i got a question for you alex how many uh mock drafts did you check out leading up to the draft i looked at like five or six okay um i, I can name 32 people who didn't look at any that, that is would, fair that would be every gm in the nfl <laughs> that is so true there there seems to be like Usually in like years, we'll see consensus like opinion over where guys should go. This year, it felt like people were just playing bingo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like, uh, they, they're not falling for the, the hype anymore with the ESPN picks and the, the other ones, the NFL.coms and stuff, man. They're, they're not falling for that anymore. They're not picking uh, Matt Leinert anymore because Mel Kuyper told them to. Uh, but you will see a lot of crazy reaching for like their guy, and that always don't work either. So it's good and bad. <laughs> yes, uh, going off that alone, the the first selection we had in the draft there, um, Emmanuel Forbes, the cornerback from Mississippi State. There, um, yeah, interesting selection. Um, if Washington was trying to like win over the media by making decisions that they all loved, that this wasn't happening in this day. Um, Forbes is a great player, but there was a lot of concerns apparently about his uh, lack of weight. Yeah, he's, he's, and if he's that can, and if he can make tackles at the pro level. But that being said. You know, if you position him correctly in the defense, he could be a ball hawk and uh, be a very valuable asset. Yeah, that, after night one, I felt a little disappointed. I know <laughs> it wasn't as fun as you wanted it to be. It'll it'll shape up later in the rest of the nights, kind of what they were doing, and I kind of understood it. After night one, though, when it passed and came and went, and I was like, oh, <laughs> that's I waited this whole time for this, and I feel like right. a lot of people felt for that. Uh, I was going to say, too, like, uh, round one itself was just weird. Like, halfway through, they were just drafting a lot of people that were at home already. Like, it wasn't a bunch of the dudes at the studio. And there was, like, players with little or no football highlights. One dude had hockey highlights. One dude looked like he got drafted for jumping over a car. (laughs) You know, that's that's right. I think uh, there was one player they were talking about too that had like more basketball like highlights <laughs> than anything too. And, I'm and this like, is like well, pick fifteen. <laughs> this yeah. isn't like round like Saturday in the middle of the day. Like this was like night one. It was crazy. I never saw anything like it. I don't know if it's because like maybe analytics play so much more into the game now that like we have teams being willing to make kind of more off the board picks based off what they see yeah. but uh it was really indicative yeah that first round there was a lot of um selections that could prove to be good but like on the onset looked like 
what are they doing? Or... And that's everything. And it's always going to be like that. And then I think that's what people are finally realizing. Whether you go by the expert picks or you just pick the guy you like, no matter what, it's a complete crapshoot. You don't know what you're getting. Yeah. So just get, just really get with these people, figure out what you want, and go after the dude you think is going to work. And sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. But even if you go by the experts, we know now for sure, sometimes it's going to work and sometimes it won't. So oh, yeah. that, in the end, it doesn't times, matter. Yeah. How many times have we looked back in years past and seen guys that were really hyped up, really big draft prospects that just ended up really doing nothing? It, it really yeah. is. It, anything can happen with this league, too. And uh, I'm just hoping that the guys that we pick are able to make an impact for the franchise. Yep. So Forbes was uh, there, Mississippi State, right next door to where I'm at. And uh Next state over. But yeah, yeah, like you said, I think I think he'll put on some weight when he gets to the NFL. They'll beef him up. And if oh, he yeah. can if he could just steal the ball, it's fine with me, man. We'll, we'll see. We don't need him to block every time. He'll be all right. Just get out there and steal the ball, man. Run it in and get out of there. We'll see what gotta happens. Give, yeah, gotta give him credit too. I mean, he has the Mississippi State uh program record for interception touchdowns yeah. and return yards in a season. He had a really good year and that really impacted his draft stock late too. So all right. Well, let's go ahead. What what I appreciate about this, we had one pick for every round. Right, we're nice and symmetrical. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I remember the sixth round. I was waiting. I'm like, I I gotta wait around for another pick, and then we made a trade, and I was like, yes, all right, <laughs> I'm free. Let's go. <laughs> so uh, round two, we had Jartavius Martin from uh, Illinois, a safety. Uh. So this is where we started to realize secondary is what they were trying to do. We had a really high-rated, nice defense last year, but secondary definitely had holes. That's where it was getting beat. So oh, that's, yeah. that's where they decided to shore it up, man, and that's where we'll see later. It's just what they were doing. They're just going for the lines. We didn't get any fancy, nothing flashy. It's kind of a – I'm going to get to that later. It's kind of like a, a stay-put kind of draft for me. But, yeah. Um, I um, um, What you think of him? I – at first was a little puzzled by the pick, but then when I see where he played in college, when he played defensive back, he was always in the slot. Mm -hmm. And one part of our defense last year where we did have some issues was coverage in the slot. So yep. to get a guy that is really good at that, once I understood that, the pick made sense. Looking at what he was rated as with his draft value beforehand, I was a little confused at first because he yeah. was ranging anywhere from like the second to the sixth round. But if we're going to play him at exactly what he's good at, then I think he's fine. There you go. Like it. So third round came and went, and we got Ricky Stromberg, a center from Arkansas. Big dude, man. Uh, he Great. Was, uh, 2022nd, he was the best offensive line blocker. I can barely put words together. Yeah, solid pick. I love this dude. dude. There's a little question. Oh yeah, a little question about his ability with uh, you know, pass rush, like defending that as an O lineman. Um, however, he's so good with run blocking that you it it's gonna be fine. I think you're gonna see him a lot, and it's gonna improve our rushing this year. Um which was already pretty good last season. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what we do this year. And this is where I kind of started to understand what's going on. Like now, now we finally got the offensive line pick. Everybody was yelling about, and I'm like, you know, when you think about it, we don't need the flashy running backs or receivers. We got so many good people, you know, right. we just need the lines. And then that's what they did. They, they took care of the little holes in the defense. And now we're going offensive line twice in a row. Because yeah. the next guy is Braden Daniels, right? Oh, Offensive. yeah. An OG from Utah. If Stromberg is a beast, Daniels is a close comparison. Uh, the one thing to note, he is more of a raw talent. So they're going to have to work with him a little bit to you know, work on his technique and things of that nature. But when it comes to his physical attributes, you when you're looking at where he's picked, you can't go wrong there. He's he's going to do a great job, and uh, he won't probably start for us, no. but he's a good guy that could fill in for some snaps during the game or if there's an injury, step in and, and kind of do that role. 
I did see uh, he had 49 games and 43 starts. So that's pretty long. You know, that's a good oh, yeah. bit of college games compared to most who only have like one season under him. So it seems like he has played for a while. I like oh, yeah. seeing when that it, personally. When it comes to his sample size, you have a lot to look at and he's always been consistent. So you really do know what you're getting here. Like he's not going to be the most, I guess, put together of like the prospects available in the draft. But this is a guy that I feel like our team can really work with. Yeah, I, I like a guy who's played more than like half a season. <laughs> like some right. of these people, like, well, gosh. And him going later too, he's probably gonna have a little more of a chip on his shoulder. Keep working hard, and uh, hopefully so. Oh yeah. So so uh, two defensive lines and two offensive lines back to back. There, this is where we yeah. traded our picks off to Buffalo. And that's where they got KJ Henry, which was a defensive end for Clemson from Clemson. Now, oh yeah, now this is interesting. He he's another one of those guys where I think he could do big things with our defense, especially with who is around him on the defensive line. He he can do a big amount of damage from the edge. Um, it's interesting because we didn't end up picking the fifth year option up for Chase Young. Right. Who who plays on defensive end. I'm so kind of okay wonder, with that. Are we looking at maybe just going for a rotation of a few guys that are just good and like see what yeah. we have now? And um I mean, you still have Young for one more year. If he yeah. does end up doing great things, just re-sign him. It's no real big deal there. But um for KJ Henry for a later round pick, I I like what I see from him, and I think he's going to get some uh, snaps on defense this season for sure. Yeah, man, 147 tackles, 13 sacks. He was always on fumbles. It seems like man, just uh, right. seems like a pretty pretty awesome, well rounded player there. So I liked it. He's a little undersized, but yeah, still, I mean, speed. Speed works in the NFL. We've seen it. Um, we've seen guys that aren't most like the most strong that are able to just get by and do the job. So um, hopefully he can do some stuff for us in Washington and uh, actually make a good impact. There you go. Love it. I'm most excited about our next pick, though, actually. All right. So uh, we ended up going with Chris Rodriguez Jr., the running back from Kentucky. And he fits the the rushing scheme that we have so well. Um, the one problem we had last year was we had Brian Robinson, but we didn't have another guy that could really, you know, step in if he needed a break and make that same impact. Uh, yeah. They had Jonathan Williams try to do some stuff, but, you know, you can only get so much from him. Th this guy is a power runner, three yards in a cloud of dust, like personifies yeah. his whole career. But, um, I think late in games, he's going to have a good impact and he'll be able to, you know, get some yards against the defense and just wear them down. Yeah, I wrote down 175 rushes for 900 yards. Nice. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah that's good stuff, and, man. And that's what I'm liking about um the commander's like scouting and draft decisions this year and last it, this seemed to be actually be getting better and picking guys that you know fit our system instead of just trying to make random picks and just mold them into like which doesn't really work you kind of have to use the players strengths like to your advantage not just kind of put them in spots yeah i'm uh yeah, so there you go. We got an offensive player finally. <laughs> it took the right. sixth round to get to it. But wow. <laughs> but I liked it, man. I'm like, okay, shore up the lines. And then uh, yeah. our, our last guy, of course, was uh the one I was excited for, just because I'm mean. But um Andre Jones oh, yeah. Jr., another junior from ULL, Lafayette, baby. Woo! Yeah, local guy for you. That's awesome. Yeah, about an hour away from you. Uh, Lafayette was like my second home. I love it there. Be going back pretty soon. Um uh, I need to go to some Cajun games. I haven't done that yet. We're gonna we're planning on going maybe this season. Might go check some out. But um, yeah. The one thing I gotta say is, uh, you know, after looking at these guys that got selected and watching some of their highlights, it, it made me really realize like how big college football is. I didn't 
because I'm oh, a Canadian. Yeah. It's not oh, really wow. Like, we have like athletic football stuff here, but it's not really that big. You don't get like a whole stadium just full <laughs> of people. Shit. So to, to see it down there, like it's it's like almost bigger than NFL for some people, and it's 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 amazing. A lot of the stadiums, <laughs> a lot of the stadiums are way bigger. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know what the Superdome holds. Uh, maybe, maybe 80, 90. Um, LSU Stadium's like 120, 130 something. It's way bigger. Yeah. And then they're, they're like all <laughs> full too. And then those crowds are just, they're, they, they love their football. I um, that. Especially down here, dirty in the, in the South. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, College God. football is life down here, man. Uh, there's yeah. people down here to have LSU everything that ain't ever seen a college. Trust me, but, <laughs> right. so but even uh, just like the SEC as a whole, like oh yeah, man, that's yeah, it's just all... amazing. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Southern college football is crazy. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, but in other places too, you know, like so you got the Ohio's and Michigan, and no Michigan's huge. Oh yeah, and stuff. And Ohio, yeah, Ohio for sure. And Ohio's and all that. It's big, man. Yeah, college football is huge. I used to follow it very religiously. I used to know all these people that got picked. Uh, you know, life happens, and I don't follow it as much as I used to anymore, sadly. I kind of miss it sometimes, but I guess I hopefully might go down some games. But, uh, yeah, man, I didn't get to look at too much of his uh, footage. I should have. But uh, 51 tackles, 7 sacks, 12 games, uh, 6'5", 258. He's a big dude. <laughs> Again, we got a lot of big oh, guys. Yeah. Like Mike Madden said, man, get some fat guys up front. That's what you need. And that's basically what we got. You know, and and um, if anything goes to show from Washington's past developing, you know, the front seven that we have, these guys can do big things, even with being late round selections. And um, I just am really interested to see the impact these guys make. Um Normally, I'm not a preseason football watcher, but I know yeah. like being more involved with this stuff now and like doing the stuff with our page, um, <laughs> at HCTRC, anyone on Facebook, if you want to go look that up, do that. Um, it, it's it's making me actually be more appreciative of like the whole process and everything, like even just like the preseason, just and then getting even to see like videos from like when they do training camps and stuff. There's just yeah. there's a lot of things that go into football that. Even I, as a fan, just never really processed before. I always do the same thing. I'm always kind of excited for like the week one of preseason, and after that, I just kind of don't care. <laughs> yeah, like at first, actually, like yeah. I'll watch the Jags and the Texans week one of preseason just to watch football, and I'll be excited. And then yeah. by week two, it's like okay, that's enough. <laughs> it's like the third quarter of a game, and you're like, oh yeah, this yeah no, I want the real deal now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can go to bed now. It's fine. But I'm um, so. I still look forward to it though for now, but yeah, I'll, I'll hopefully. Well, there's no way I'll be able to see it down here, but hopefully I'll get to see some of it, and uh, we'll see what some of these guys do. Last year's draft class we had was so good. You yes. look back at those names now and say what you want, whatever. But I, I think we had a great group of dudes last year, and uh, I don't know if you'll see them these new guys as much as you saw, you know, uh, Robinson and them. Yeah, last year think, you might not see these dudes as much, but like you said, hopefully they just make the impact. I think we got just guys here that are solid players that can step up when we need them, like need them to. They're probably not gonna take over the roles from any of our key guys, but um, yeah, just it's a good amount of talent brought into accent of what we have, and and hopefully we're able to continue winning games and improve upon last season. And what I was saying earlier, too, I felt like, like I said, this is kind of like just a stay put draft. I feel like we we did enough last year. I mean, honestly, we're about to switch owners, probably going to switch coaches and stuff soon. Oh, yeah. I, they're not going to go out there and try to win a Super Bowl or anything crazy. You know, you're going to try to have a decent season, get in and get out until you can get the pieces in line to put things together. Let an owner kind of take things over and do what they want to do with stuff. I mean, there's not really much you can do. You know, so exactly. I felt like this is kind of just like, okay, let's just kind of stay where we are with things. I know nobody wants to hear that, but we almost made the playoffs. We had a good season. You could still do it. You just kind of just kind of have a good season and get through it, man. And uh, put the pieces together for the next couple of years, I think, is kind of what you have to do. 
nobody wants to hear that, but it's, it, it just happens. <laughs> Dang, that's true. And I mean, the NFC has shown that it seems to be the more wilder of the two conferences. So I'm, it doesn't hurt for Washington to just try to keep building off what we had. I, I didn't think it, it was worth like blowing everything up yet. Um, no. Definitely not when we're that close to actually making the playoffs. Um, no, no, like I said, the team team in yeah. place is decent. They filled some holes where there was some and didn't do nothing too much last year than that. Just kind of let it be. We got a we got a rookie quarterback basically that's going to have to step in. You know, like I said, you got coaches that are probably going to change by next year, I think. And you just you, you can't go too crazy from there. Just kind of see what happens. See what we got. Go from there next time. Right. Hopefully there's, it's good. And there still is some unknowns, too. We know even with Eric Bieniemy, um, yep. we know that he did control some of the Chiefs' offense, but it will remain to see how does he do just having one full control in Washington. Um, I, I think he's going to do fine. I, I don't think you study under Andy Reid for like that many years and then just not learn a thing or two. <laughs> I'm sure he's learned but, something. Um, I'm sure he's done it's, just fine. It's, it's going to be interesting. Um, I, I can see why some fans are a little like concerned or cautious, but um, I have faith with this team. And they showed last year that even in the face of adversity, when they lost like four straight games, they could turn it around. Um, I don't think anyone can take our team lightly anymore. Yeah. I'm not going in with super crazy expectations or nothing, man. I'm really not. I think it'll be a good season. I think we can finish pretty positively and kind of looking forward to nine, next year. <laughs> this, right? I'm thinking around nine to 10 wins, hopefully, if we can pull it so. off. I mean, so. uh, especially if our running game is able to take off, like I'm hoping it will, but probably so. Um, That's kind of where I'm at. Probably so. That's uh, we ran through that really fast. So oh, yeah. there's that. That's a good thing. But yeah, look, we were uh, talking a little bit. Obviously, ownership is changing. We know that now. Chances are, uh, we got the owner of the Sixers about to step in. That's right. He's also the owner of the New Jersey Devils, which yeah, um, sure. that's interesting. They're doing okay. Um, <laughs> it, it's cool because looking at how he's run teams as an owner. Like in other sports, he seems to be that guy that will like give them time just to see what he has before he makes decisions in terms of changes. So I, I think Ron Rivera and crew are going to have like at least this season to figure it out. Um, and everyone keeps saying like that, like his time in Washington has been terrible. No, no, it hasn't been. I mean, no. Has it been what we expected in terms of like just make the playoffs every year? No, but there literally has been improvement every year. And yeah. um, just hopefully this year with an offensive coordinator that seems to know what he's doing, um, I think he has enough tools around him to succeed um, in terms of our quarterback, Howell. So, um, yeah, just going to keep my hopes up and we'll get through the year regardless. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ron, Ron's been doing this through complete chaos, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you got to, the house is literally falling down around him. So, and, I think and the players too. And you got right. fans that are pissy and everything else. It's just like, he know? might not, <laughs> he might not be the best coach in terms of like football, like strength, like getting wins out of everything and stuff. But in terms of what environment he's had to deal with, he might have been the best one to actually like just lead through it. He's been a calmness in the storm. So he has been. I wasn't. I wasn't completely sure about him at first, but he has been that. So. Oh yeah. No, trust me. There's been times too where I'm like, ah, we should fire him, and it's like week <laughs> four, and I'm like, eh. And then <laughs> later on, you see the good parts of it, and it's, yeah, he's been. You get what you get with him for sure. That, that, it's how it is. Well. Y'all go check out Alex at his YouTube page over there, which is a uh, Power Driver Media Group. He's got a cool page, blowing it up over there. Go check him out. Yeah, just uh, reached. Go ahead. You just reached fifty subscribers there, and uh, also make sure to check out Kenneth's channel, Too Punk to Be a Podcast. He's got some cool stuff on there. I've uh, been going through your back catalog, so. Oh wow. There's a lot in the uh, audio version. Not all of them's made it to YouTube yet, but uh, I'm working on that also maybe hey it's good stuff <laughs> definitely check it out 
I mean, if you're going to promote me, I'm going to promote you. Every there time. you go. That's what we do. All right, man. Well, that'll be doing it for now. Quick short one. We'll be back with uh, better stuff later and more of what's going on with the ownership changes when it actually officially happens. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it'll be time to celebrate then. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll pop the champagne for that. What <laughs> Then we'll talk about it a little more. Right now, it's uh not quite there yet. It's, it's done. Y'all can stop saying sell the team now. It's over. <laughs> right. We're like on third and goal at the one. Just give it time. We'll get in there. <laughs> and it's a Robinson. Let's go. All right. Right. There we go. All, All right. right. Well, there you, you go. We'll see y'all next time. And that's it. All right. Take it easy, everyone.